Live on ringside tonight, we're about 15 minutes away from the WBO World Heavyweight title defense by Herbie Hyde of Great Britain against the American sometime superstar Riddick Bowe. Gary Mason, the former British heavyweight champion, here to look ahead with me. A big odds-on favorite on the strip in Las Vegas, and he has the form to back up favoritism. An Olympic silver medalist, a wealth of major championship experience, size and power as well. But tonight, we wait to find out if the real Riddick Bowe shows up Gary Norman on the man considered by some good judges to be the best heavyweight in the world. Riddick Lamont Bow, the man who most American boxing writers acknowledge as the best heavyweight around. The only blemish on his record is a loss to Evander Holyfield, but of his victories, of which there are 35, there's some good names. That was a great shot, chopping right, and over he goes. And this will be a big test of his will now. Inside uppercut by Riddick Bowe, oh, and another. Oh, and another. You can see that last uppercut landing flush on the chin. And Tony Tubbs is up against the rope. Here's Bowe now. The same thing that he did with Jose Revolta. And he took a left. He's down from the left. Let's see if he'll pin around. Let's see if he'll clown around. Joe O'Neill trying to get Bowe in a neutral corner. He's not winking this time. He's not going to make it this time. It's all over. First round knockout. It was a very long round. The bell was Number one. one. Secondly, finally, when the bell rang, Elijah Tillery stuck his face out, and Riddick Bowe, and Riddick Bowe just hit it. And you see Rock Newman getting involved in this. Both of them almost falling over the rope. Oh, he's got him. Cuts up. Suddenly looked open. And Bo has concluded the argument. It's over. Stopped. With victories like those, Bo worked his way back into contention. In November of 92, got his chance against the undisputed champion, Holyfield. It was his finest hour. Oh, big jab from Bo. And he's looking to follow it up with the right hand. Yeah, on, really knocked Holyfield's head back on his shoulders, that jab. He has, when he uses it, it's a very, very strong jab and a good hook. Oh, he's got he's it. in trouble. He's in trouble now. Holyfield is gone. Bo senses the finish now. Holyfield is all over the place. And there's a long time left in the round. Holyfield is fighting for dear life in there now. Bad moments. And this is this where the title changes hands. For the winner by unanimous decision and new. He trashed the WBC belt, which Lewis gratefully accepted, and defended his other two titles against Mike Dokes, the former champion some decade or so earlier. It was a one-round demolition. He then defended his WBA version of the crown against journeyman Jesse Ferguson. This too was a hugely embarrassing one-sided affair, stopped in round two. But then came the rematch with Holyfield, which he lost. I've disappointed a lot of people by letting Evander Holyfield beat me. Evander Holyfield didn't beat me because he wanted to beat me. He beat me because I let him beat me. And uh, people are going to do what you let them do to you. Bo picked up the pieces of his career with a win over Larry Donald, the mover in the mold of Herbie Hyde. That was a 10-round points victory. Riddick Bo is a very wealthy man. His fleet of nine cars at his Washington home are testament to that. But he's also a nice man, a family man. This is the latest of the clan. In preparation for this fight, Bo drove to Las Vegas in his mobile home. I'll let him take up the story. This is the, the uh, Bowmobile. And um, I purchased this after the, uh, the first Holyfield fight. I decided to start taking it to the training camp. Not to mention, um, I became somewhat, uh, somewhat afraid of flying. So this just comes in handy. Whilst manager Rock Newman plotted Bo's future, could he be dreaming of Tyson? And Bo got down to doing the other thing in his life that he does best. The only thing left to say is, has Bo taken Hyde too lightly and listened to Colonel Sanders too heavily? That's kind of been the question with Riddick Bo for about the last two years or so. Do you believe first up that he's physically ready for this one? Um, I believe that he, yeah, by however he would have worked, he would have worked a little bit, and I believe it would be enough to see him through this one. Well, we hear from the training camp that Eddie Futch, his veteran trainer, 
had to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Riddick Bowe in the build-up to this fight and allegedly gave him an ultimatum, Gary, saying, either you really g get down to it for this fight or I'm off. I don't want any fool fooling around here. Do you believe that? Yes, I believe that, because Riddick Bowe, you could see, he just, as soon as he won the championship, it, he started really living life, and it does happen to somebody when they do come into that sort of glory and money. Right, now you touch on the bigger question. Physically, he may have lost the poundage. Mentally, can he get back to the peak of his first Holyfield performance? Um, mentally, I think he can, because he has the incentive of, like, the 100 million, the 200 million. They, everybody's got the incentive of the Tyson fight, and that will give them the mental mm -hmm. attitude that they will need. His, his qualities speak for himself, but his critics say he tends to be one-paced. Do you agree with that? He, he may well be one-paced, but he's not slow. He, he, he's, he, he's as quick as any heavyweight out there. And with his sheer size, we can't expect him to be fleet-footed. His size is his advantage. Right, now to Herbie Hyde. We know him very well over here, but over there, he's just another up-and-coming fighter. Hyde knows a good performance tonight can change everything around. He may be largely unproven, but he is unbeaten, mobile, young, hungry, and now apparently maturing very nicely, even at 23, a tender age for a heavyweight. Gary Norman once more. The count is five, six, seven, eight. He's not going to make it, I don't think. Nine. No, he's knocked out. Up too late this time. And Herbie Hyde has won the WBO Heavyweight Championship. The realisation of a dream, a memory that would live with him forever. Herbie Hyde was a champion. I was disappointed he didn't get up, but I was happy. I was happy as well. The joy of being a world champion, the joy of lifting the belt. That's like the best memory of my life. Hyde came to this country as a young child. He remembers little of his native Nigeria. His adoptive parents raised him in the quiet Norfolk countryside in the sleepy village of Tavram. He only boxed at school to avoid doing homework, but it served him well, and by 1989, he made his professional debut. Even then, he was as confident inside the ring as he was out. I've always felt like that guy. I've, and I still feel like that now. That's, that's just me, you know, when we all have, we all have feelings some, I've, I have a very self-confidence. I've, I've always believed in myself. I always feel I could do it, and I still feel this and now. Like any young professional, a succession of quick, spectacular victories followed. But it was his win over Michael Bent that really caught the headlines. Their pre-fight press conference raised a few eyebrows too. Do you think I'm worried? Never get worried, my man. These incredible scenes were witnessed by millions on television. There, to set an example and publicise the fight, both were fined in the region of £10,000. Hyde has also made the headlines outside of the ring. He is a young man trying to come to terms with who and what he is. And as he says, anyone can make a mistake. Though you know I'm not a bad person, but a lot of people that don't know me because I'm shy, I don't talk to a lot of people, they might think otherwise, but that's life. I mean, what's happened to me could happen to anyone. It could happen to the Queen. It's happened to them now, so... Um, that's life. He isn't a bad man. This is his young adopted brother, Alan, seriously ill with leukaemia. After winning the World Championship, Hyde donated the belt to the hospital that was looking after his brother to raise some money. Well, now you know a little bit about Herbie Hyde, the man. But what about Hyde and Bo as a fight? Bo will enter the ring some 20 pounds heavier than Herbie Hyde and some three to four inches taller. So who better to discuss this fight and the former world heavyweight champion, Lennox Lewis. Gary, let's discuss this over a cup of tea. Size is important. Let me tell you why. For Herbie, size is important because he's the smaller guy. So he has to utilize his speed and make sure that he keeps on the move and keep Bo missing. For Bo, he's got the size. He has to use his weight and his power, and he has to make sure that he doesn't miss. Let's look at size in terms of weight. Primo Carnero was the heaviest champion of all time, Foreman the second in his second spell as champion, and Bo is the all-time number five, but Hyde weighs in at number 26, a mere 216 pounds. If we look at height, Bo will have some three-inch advantage, but at six foot one and a half, Hyde is taller than all of these previous champions. Liston, Tyson, Patterson, and Marciano. And Emmanuel Stewart thinks that Hyde can use these factors to his advantage. Well, Herbie Hyde has the style that is 
I think, necessary to beat Bo. Uh, Bo is physically a very big man, as we all know, and you're not going to be able to out-muscle him anyway. And I think the fact that Herbie moves and boxes is going to be the type of a style that would give Bo his uh, biggest problem. Now, if you want exact comparisons, Hyde is almost identical in height and weight to Holyfield and Liston. And they weren't bad, were they? Bo may well be bigger, but Herbie can cut him down to size. Well, that fills in some of the uh, historical background, but Gary, history also tells us that having a year layoff is not a good idea. That's what Herbie Hyde has done. How much of a problem is that? I think that is going to be part of the contributing factor to why I believe he may lose um, and that and the, just the fact of going into Las Vegas the whole experience of fighting in Las Vegas is going to be another factor mm -hmm. but who's to tell because as I said the, the, the people that are flying the flag have got high spirits after what Nigel Benn has done and we, as we've been seeing countless times recently anything is possible. Now is his style going to be difficult for both? Um, I'm, just on, on, on reflection, we were watching the Donaldson when Bo did fight Donaldson, a very similar style was his last fight. Mm -hmm. and he, Larry he Donald, did, yeah. Larry Donald, sorry. And it did go ten rounds. And then Larry Donald was moving about in the similar way to in which Herbie Hyde is. But I don't know, I just, I still, I kill, still keep seeing this impression of a rabbit in Herbie Hyde. And I think he was going to get caught between the lights. Does he take it as well as he gives it out? Um, you know the funny thing, what's good about this fight is you never tell how good a fighter he is until you see him being beat. We've seen Riddick Bow being beat, we've seen how good he is. This is going to put her behind to the test. And in the vernacular, it's sucking it up when you're under pressure. Yes. Yeah. As we've seen, we uh, already tonight we saw Holyfield doing it against Bow in their first meeting. That's, that's right. That's the kind of punishment you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And her behind, all credit to him, he's gone in the lion's den, isn't he? But the big problem also, Gary, would be that there is nobody remotely on Hyde's record up to this point that can dish it out like Bow could if he's on form. Correct. And um, so that must be, that has to be a mental thing. If Herbie's been realistic with himself, he will see that. But then hopefully he's not being realistic with himself. He's seeing things from his point of view. And the bottom line from Herbie's point of view is that he will be two million pounds richer, win or lose tonight. That's what he's taking back home to build his dream house, but he wants more. And this is how he prepared to go to work against Bo at the weigh-in yesterday. Uh, Riddick Bo going to the scales first and the big question would it be 179 178 or something much slimmer yeah. Yeah. 241 all right 41 announcer weight was 241 pounds 17 stone Bo. three then for riddick bow matching uh, his weight against larry donald and now for herbie hyde well we know there's going to be a big weight difference here herbie but how big a difference here's what happened Two fourteen. Weight is two hundred and fourteen pounds. Two fourteen. So all bar one pound. Riddick Bow is two stone heavier than Herbie Hyde. Is that what you expected, Gary Mason? Yeah, somewhere around there. But it's just Riddick Bow. His mother was um six foot. His father was six foot four. Just the sheer mass of the man. He he's a big six foot five you know big 17 stone and Herbie behind it, it in comparison to him he's going to look like a middleweight now Bo's weight has gone up and down like a yo-yo since the first meeting with holyfield 17 5 against mike dote 17 6 against ferguson holyfield second time around 17 8 he was 16 11 the first time they yeah. met and it, it got worse buster mathis fight he was 17 9 yeah. then he started to come back down again it's not always as, as simple as just losing the pounds, is it? It depends on how you do it. it. It's as well, you've got to get your mind right. And after the loss, obviously, when he went into the Holyfield fight, the first one, it was his chance. He would have prepared himself in the best way possible. And after becoming champion and the glow and everything else, he wouldn't have worked as hard. And, that would have, and he may have allowed himself to get away with it. And then when he lost, again, when he lost the title, that done him in again. On the way back, he may not have wanted to come back, but now there is a great deal of incentive, mm -hmm. and that is what will get him into shape. How hard do you think he punches? I think, he, I think it's his sheer size rather than his actual punch power, because he gets the lever, lever, leverages in the punches that make them harder than they could possibly, possibly be against somebody of his own size. 
Speaking of size, let's examine the tail of the tape for this WBO World Heavyweight title showdown, Gary. Now, basically, the story here is that Hyde is younger, lighter, and significantly smaller. Or you could say he's actually less experienced, doesn't have enough bulk, and the size will go against him and less experience. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, but I think the, um, the fights themselves, I think it's it really down to the characters, but the 25 KOs and 29 KOs, they're a very similar thing, aren't they? Um, the amount of fights is not dissimilar. Mm -hmm. And I would have liked to have seen the reach up there because what the reach does, it determines whose punch is going to get to the others before, sooner. Well, I can tell you, actually, I've got it here. Uh, Hyde 78 inch reach yeah. and bow 81 inches. So that means that if Riddick Bow's jab is even going the same speed as her behind, his punch would get there before him mm -hmm. with that power behind it. Right, what would be your final instructions to Herbie Hyde? Well, I'd say to Herbie Hyde, there's an expression they use on the street, get dark. You just have to go out there and get dark because he's just got to go. Herbie, I read something Herbie said that he fights on, there is no plan, he lets the spirits take over him. He's got to get a dark spirit to go in there and really do some damage, just like Nigel Benn did. The other thing from the Bow point of view, let's make this absolutely clear, if Riddick Bow does not win tonight, is his career over? I wouldn't say his career is over, but it, it really does put a, a great dent in the in the Herbie in in, in the Riddick both situation, mm -hmm. you know, and his credibility is yeah. shot really. Yeah, and Herbie Hyde, he can only win tonight because if he wins, he goes on to more glory. He, if he loses and loses in the way I believe he will, if he's going to lose, then he's going to win. Right, Britain's 23-year-old world heavyweight champion Herbie Hyde, the WBO world heavyweight champion. If he does lose, as Gary suggests, that he feels he will do tonight, then he's still got time on his side to come back. But at 27, Riddick Bowe has really got to go to work and achieve and get dark, in Mason's phrase, <laughs> in order to win that WBO World Heavyweight title belt tonight. It's a title he wants rubbish, but he needs it now very, very badly. Let's get back to ringside uh, for the continued build-up to the main event. And uh, we'll rejoin our commentary team, Glenn McCrory, and first, Ian Dar. Thank you very much indeed, Paul and Gary. A lot of the ring celebrities being announced at the moment. The celebrities at ringside, among them Jack Nicholson, the famous actor, Faye Dunaway. I think Marvin Hagler is here. Sugar Ray Leonard. Joe Frazier has certainly been around the fight hotel. And the atmosphere is building here all the time. They're building this promotion at the MGM Grand Garden as Brooklyn against Britain. Or if you like, New York against Norwich, Big Daddy against the Dancing Destroyer. And the atmosphere is growing here. It was, quite honestly, a bit earlier on, Glenn, a wee bit flat, but now you can feel the tension rising in the air and maybe just a little sense in the atmosphere somewhere that maybe there could be an upset. All logic points to Bo, but Herbie Hyde is largely unproven. He could be anything, couldn't he? He certainly could. There's always that chance with an undefeated fighter, especially a heavyweight who can punch. And he's done, he's done remarkably well. He's here. He's got his big opportunity. He is the champion. And it, you know, he's got a, a fabulous chance to beat Riddick Bowe. And I think you know, people in the back of their mind are thinking, well, if he does, you know, what has he done? It's an unbelievable feat if he can do that. I think it would be the possibly the best win ever by a British boxer in the United States, certainly since Lloyd Hannigan's famous win over Don Curry back in 1986 when Curry was regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter around. But uh, I think the Americans particularly would be absolutely astonished because the American boxing writers in a recent poll voted Bo as the best heavyweight in the world and they've never heard of Herbie Hyde outside of the trade here. That's right, we've heard a, a lot of them, certainly tonight we've heard a lot of talk that Riddick Bo is the best heavyweight in the world. And, you know, as we've been around Las Vegas, lots of people, it's, it's who's Herbie Hyde. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be great if we can see the skills that Hyde's shown here against Mick, Michael Bend. If he can do this sort of thing with Riddick Bo, if he can use his speed and frustrate Bo, and Bo doesn't like guys to go away from him. And Hyde does it so well. And he's also very quick, and if Bo makes a mistake, he can land shots just like that. You saw his hand speed there. That is the big 
point, isn't it, for Herbie Hyde tonight? His speed and his movement. He might just have the style to make Riddick Bowe look very ponderous. But, of course, that victory there over Michael Bent afterwards, there were medical problems with Bent. He was found to have a concussive brain injury. And, of course, there were people who were saying, well, what did the win actually mean? It became devalued afterwards a bit. It certainly did, but, you know, as has been said all the time long, he's the man that beat the man that beat the man. So... You know, if we go along with that, he did. Ben beat Morrison. He destroyed Tommy Morrison. So, you know, you've got to go along with that. There's the tail of the tape. Herbie Hyde is four years younger. The weight difference is nearly two stone. One pound's off two stone. But we knew that. Bo is three inches taller, and he has a three-inch reach advantage for this fight. He also is the proven world-quality fighter, Hyde just that one big win over Michael Bent. Rest of it, really, against spoon-fed opponents. But he did look so good that night at Millwall that uh, he made a few people sit up and take notice of him for the very first time. But um, all the physical advantages are with Riddick Bow. but of the two of them, the athlete is Herbie Hunt. There is marvellous Marvin Hagler and Jack Nicholson there sitting behind him. Just part of the star-studded audience here, Jack Nicholson, is a huge boxing fan. I've seen him at a lot of the promotions, and uh, it's good to see him there. I know uh, I was at the 1984 Olympics. He watched every bout, sat there through every bout. Yes, we've seen him quite a few fights, and Marvin Hagler looking well. He's done a bit of acting, like you, hasn't he, Glenn? Yeah. Hagler. <laughs> 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 yes, me and Marvin, struggling actors. Yeah. Glenn, who recently played Vlad the Impaler in a recent edition of Casualty. I don't know if you caught that. He's trying to keep quiet about that. <laughs> I thought you were good. Thank you. <laughs> you never told them the follow-up story, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you told them. Only. <laughs> now then, Riddick Bowe is on his way. The former world heavyweight champion. The man who was brilliant on the night that he beat Evander Holyfield, but probably just out of shape when Holyfield took that title back off him. And that has been a very, very costly defeat. It's put him out in the cold. He's still trying to find a way back. Is this the night that Riddick Bowe produces a turning point in his career? Eddie Futch's trainer says he's in great shape, the best shape he's been in, he says, since that first Holyfield fight. And he believes that Bo will start to re-establish himself from here. He starts a six to one on favorite. The man who has joined the long list of uh, sports stars, who's now frightened of flying, he goes everywhere in his Bowmobile. Riddick Bow, 35 wins, 29 by knockout, and just that one defeat. He looks serene, doesn't he? On Monday, Rock Newman, his manager, and Riddick Bow are going to meet Mike Tyson on the eve of his release from the Indiana Youth Center. They hope to engineer a $115 million fight in New York but there's business to attend to, first of all, right here in Las Vegas. Riddick Bowe is in the ring. And he awaits Herbie Hyde of Great Britain. And we will await with great interest to see just exactly how Hyde looks on his way to the ring. He looks relaxed and confident all week. How will he look when he actually gets in there? Doesn't exactly look tense, does he, Bo? He doesn't, he looks very relaxed. Yeah, very relaxed, just walking around, having a little chat. Looks nice and loose. Nice man, Riddick Bo. He's a family man, one of 13 children, married with four youngsters himself. The fanfare is for Herbie Hyde. The 
mock beef eaters in attendance. We've had British bobbies or men dressed up as British bobbies. They've been playing the uh, British angle for all it's worth. Some travelling fans, some of them from Norwich. We've had West Ham banners here. And here comes Herbie Hyde. Freddie King, his trainer on the left, and there are those British bobbies again. You can't get away from that this week. <laughs> How do you think he looks, Glenn? I think he looks good. He looks very intense. Hopefully he's, you know, he looks focused. Unbeaten in 26 fights, Herbie Hyde. And here's an interesting statistic. He scored 42 knockdowns in those fights. I wonder whether... The Americans might just underestimate Hyde's power. They've got to look at them statistics. He's, he's fast and he can bang. But I think he, as we, you know, he doesn't just stand and really, you know, really try and whack his shots in. He's very quick. He's on the move and he's putting his combination together. And it's, it's a long time since you've seen a heavyweight like that who moves and puts his punches together so quickly. Herbie Hyde, born in Nigeria, brought up in Norfolk by his adoptive parents, Alan and Tina. A young man who has come up the hard way and has established himself somewhere near the top on the heavyweight scene. He's a new name to most of the American public. He hopes to make them remember him tonight. The MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight Spencer Promotions and the MGM Grand in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser. This Bud's for you. Present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman Dr. James May, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Luther Mack, and Crispin Rivera. Executive Director Mark Ratner. Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky. Attending physicians, Dr. James Wishgame and Dr. William Berliner. Timekeeper at the bell, Mike Lachella. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Al Bicek. Representing the World Boxing Organization, President Francisco Valcarcel. And Supervisor at Ringside of the WBO, Florida State Athletic Commission Chairman Jimmy Resnick. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Chuck Jampa, Bill Graham, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Richard Steele. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the fabulous MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get it! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with red trim, weighing 241 pounds, this 1988 Olympic silver medalist brings into the ring a professional record of 35 victories against only one loss, with one no contest, and 29 of his 35 victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, the challenger and former undisputed Champion of the world, Riddick, Big Daddy Bow. Tremendous reception for Bow, 17 stone, three pounds. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with red letters, and weighing 214 pounds. He brings an outstanding professional record of 26 victories without a loss. And he has proven his punching power by knocking out 25 of those 26 opponents. Ladies and gentlemen, from Norwich, Norfolk, England, presenting the undefeated WBO Heavyweight Champion of the World.
great noise from the British fans who've travelled here hoping to see a huge upset. Herbie Hyde at 9 to 2 against Riddick Bowe, 6 to 1 on with the Las Vegas bookies here. The first two rounds you would think might be dangerous here, Glenn, for Herbie Hyde. I wonder whether Bo might try to charge him and catch him cold. I would think that that would be his tactics. On lots of occasions, he hasn't been a particularly fast starter ball, but I think he want to try and you know, use his strength, use his weight, and get onto this straight away. So we're all set here at the MGM Grand Garden. Herbie Hyde, this is the biggest fight of his life. Riddick Bo, one of the elite heavyweights. Some say the best man around. A huge step up in class for Herbie Hyde. Can he pass this degree course? Bo, as you can see, much the bigger man, three inches taller. Hyde with speed and athleticism on his side. And throwing the first punches of the contest as well. Fascinating to see how well he settles, but it is a huge difference in size. First time it's really rammed home to us when you see him in the ring like that. That's right. That's a, this is the first time that it's become very, very obvious what a task he has and how much smaller he is. But he's doing the right thing. He's got to move around. He's got to fan his shots, get in there quick, use them fast comp combinations, and he's a fast and heavy puncher. Key moment is going to be when Bo unleashes that extra power for the first time. How will Hyde be able to ship that punch? from a man two stones heavier. It's a lot of weight to give away. And a big question is also that Hyde has been out of the ring for a year. You know, how much is that to go in? Power, size, experience, all on the side of the former world heavyweight champion, Riddick Bowe, with the red stripe down his shorts. Hyde with those little tassels. Tentative opening from Riddick Bow here. I know he feels that he just needs to bide his time here. He's got respect for Hyde. He certainly wasn't rubbishing him in the build-up to this. And Hyde doing more of the work in the opening round, and Bow just motioning him to come on in. But the good thing there is Hyde is getting them shots off. Bo has scarcely thrown a punch so far. That lateral movement so important for Herbie Hyde to present the mobile target. Never let Bo get set. Not to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He's got to get in, throw those fast combinations and out again. So far, so good for Hyde. But the big questions as yet unanswered. But these are good tactics for Herbie Hyde. He's, his movement's good. I know the floor camp were worried about that. They kept saying, you know, Nevada judges would not score points for moving fighters. But Hyde's moving and he's scoring. There's his speed coming into play. So far, Hyde has had the best of this opening round. Good right hand from, from Hyde. He shocked Michael Bent a year ago, and that was Hyde's opening round. No doubt about that, whatever nationality the judges are. Well, that was a very good round, and Hyde finished it in good fashion with a, a very solid right hand, which I'm sure will have gotten Riddick Bo's respect. Just working underneath the left eye. There have been uh, one or two cuts problems in the past, not too many for Riddick Bo, who has the excellent cutsman Ralph Citro in his corner. He was cut quite badly in one of the fights against Holyfield. Just working with the, uh, the ends well, they're the kind of iron underneath to stop, make sure there's no swelling. But uh, Hyde did well in that opening round. He did very well, that was a, a very relaxed display. He moved well side to side, kept Bo off balance all the time, and then every so often jumped in and threw a good combination coming in in the end with that good right hand which I'm, I'm certain would have hurt Bo well if so, Hyde wasn't confident when he came in he may be feeling a bit more confident I'm after sure that. that would have helped round two interesting start all right <laughs> but 
though he's had a couple of wins since he lost the title on the comeback trail. He beat, uh, he beat Larry Donald. The other was a no contest, as it turned out, by Buster Mathis Jr. when he uh, hit him when he was down. Bo gives the impression at the moment of a man just biding his time. Maybe just sizing what Herbie Hyde exactly has to offer. He does well. I think now after that first round, he'll be a, a little bit carefuler when he decides to make his attack. I haven't seen a right hand at all yet from Bo. Couldn't be more different than the start he made against Holyfield on the night he won the World Heavyweight Championship. Looks ultra cautious, doesn't he, so far, Bo? He does. He's walking forward, but he's not getting any shots off. He's not using that jab. He's got a big height and reach advantage, and he's not getting the jab off. The Americans have been saying here that Bo not only has to win here, he has to produce a show stopping performance. Bo's unhappy there. Thinks that there was a butt, I think, from Herbie Hyde. Richard Steele reads the right at Bo is not happy at all. Bo claims he was butted. And he's still protesting. Is he making a bit of a meal of that, do you think? Well, he is. I would have thought with him wanting to make a, a big impression in that fight, if he had been hit, he wouldn't have made such a big deal about it. Would have wanted to keep it hit, but he didn't. He really made a meal of it. I think Hyde wanted to touch gloves there as a gesture of sportsmanship and goodwill to Bo, and Bo was having none of it. Well, we'll see if Bo gets a bit annoyed and this makes him work a bit harder. Well, was that just a little sign of distress from Bo early on? You can see in the, the ball corner, they're waving their man in. We want him to get, to get on to Hyde quicker. Hyde has got to be very careful that Bo doesn't cut him off at the corners. Again, the fast, sharp right hand from Hyde. Hyde did not get a point deducted for that alleged butt. So far, so good for Hyde. But 12 rounds is a long time to make these tactics work against a big, proven, world-class heavyweight. You can just feel this American crowd, who'd never heard of Herbie Hyde, warming to this fight and what they're watching here. You can, he's certainly counting very well, just leaning away, coming back with shots, and Bo again complaining about something. He's goodness, not happy. Goodness knows what that complaint was about. Hyde doing very, very well. Two jabs, fast right hand. Terrific start here from the lightly regarded British boxer, lightly regarded in American eyes, that is, but with a growing reputation on what he did in the opening two rounds here. That, surely, was Hyde's round again. Again, a very good round for Hyde, and I think he will have upset Bo. Bo complained of a, a headbutt, and then later in the round complained of something else. So he's upset, things aren't going his way. He's got a lot to do here, he's got to try and change things around. They're, they're very puzzled at trying to trap Hyde on against the ropes or in the corner because Hyde is moving all the time and then he just moves away and he comes back with good counters. Now, is this the butt? This is where Bo complains that Hyde butted him. He reels back against the ropes in just a moment. There. Did seem to be a little upward movement of the head from Hyde in there. but no point deduction. Two rounds gone, two rounds to hide, I reckon. Certainly do, two good rounds. This is the third, due to go 12, of course, for this WBO Heavyweight Championship. Herbie Hyde from Norwich. The man who calls himself the Dancing Destroyer, still only 23. Some say he's the fastest heavyweight since the young Ali. Good sharp jabs, and Bo's face is the kind that just has the te tendency to puff up a little bit. If those jabs keep on ramming home again, the hand speed of Hyde just bewildering Bo. He 
It's very good to see that Hyde is beaten forward to the jab. Going with a height and reach advantage and Hyde, the speed is making all the difference. Hyde has the chance here to make a massive name for himself. Oh, left hand gets in. Stiff jab. And that, just for a moment, if I wasn't mistaken, just seemed to stiffen Hyde's legs for a moment. And now Bo starts to unleash for the first time. These are the key moments in this fight, you feel, when Bo does start to let go with those heavy punches, but the right-hand counter was a good one from Herbie Hyde, and Bo was shaken a little bit by that. Well, goodness me, look at the way Hyde's come back here. It crashes another right hand. This young man is totally unfazed by the assignment. That's terrific stuff from Herbie Hyde, because I thought Bo had him going a little. And down goes Hyde. That surely was just a slip. No knockdown, no knockdown. No knockdown, but he's definitely he's hurt from something. He's hurt from something. Now, what was that? He Hyde is suddenly all over the place. He obviously got hit with something. It was one of those phantom punches, and down he goes again. Well, this is mysterious. I think this might be the end of the road for Herbie Hyde here, suddenly out of nowhere. What was he caught with in there? It's as if suddenly everything's gone out of him. And suddenly he comes back again. Extraordinary developments. But I think Hyde needs that bell to end this round. Oh. And down he goes again. A big right uppercut that big time, right Ian. Uppercut. The power of Bo is unleashed after such a promising start. Now, this is the second authentic knockdown of the round. A three knockdown rule is in effect. If Hyde goes down again, it's an automatic stoppage. There are only seconds left in the round. Can he possibly get through this? One more knockdown means Bo is the winner. That bell cannot come soon enough. There it is. Hyde has got through that. Now that, what a round that was. But I still do not know what that first punch was that got Hyde in all of a dither straight away when his legs just went to jelly suddenly. They did it. From where we sat, it just looked like he fell forward under his knees off balance. But obviously, we were on the blind side. I think Bo must have caught him with the right hand. He went down and it was obvious he was in trouble. Doctor's in there as well. Hyde is in some trouble. After that fantastic start he made, well, we did make the point that when Bo started to land, how would Hyde react to that? Um, I think we have the answer, and the answer is an ominous and alarming one from the point of view of the British boxer. Now, let's look at this again and see if we can see from a different angle. He just seemed to catch the edge of that left hook, but it, it didn't seem a, a really good shot that landed. Fourth round. Well, can Hyde come back from that torrid third round he had? Guess what an unbelievable round that was, and he did manage, amongst all that, to hurt Bo as well. And back comes Hyde again, putting Bo under pressure. Oh, he's got him! Oh, no, it's a slip. Well, it looked for a moment as if that was a punch, but Bo lost his footing, no knockdown. And Hyde, in this extraordinary fight here, suddenly has another lease of life. One moment he looks out on his feet, the next moment he has Bo, it seems, on the verge of a knockdown. That's right, he was catching Bo with good shots and Bo threw everything he had into a left hook and missed Hyde with that and slipped over. But just before that, Hyde was landing with good shots. You're right, just when he looks hurt Hyde, he lands a, a good couple of shots. This is a tremendous fight. But Bo's extra firepower may be crucial. Hyde down twice in round three, as well as one slip. Well, this has been highly dramatic so far. Hyde, the smaller lighter man again at su superior speed
Knight's doing well with the lateral movement, just keeping Bo off balance, not allowing him to land that big right hand. He certainly can't afford another round like that third, though, can he, Hyde? Oh, great right hand! Beautifully timed punch, but the right hand through from Bo gets her in another clubbing right and a left. Hyde's hurt by that. Hyde's hurt by that. It's the extra power, you see. I don't think Herbie Hyde is going to be able to take too much more of that. Every time Bo lands, Hyde is badly shaken up. He's down for the third time. There's half a minute left in round four. Bo closes in and senses that he can finish it. This time it's finished. It's stopped. Well, I thought Richard Steele had stopped the fight there. He seemed to wave it over and let Hyde get up again. But another knockdown in this round with 14 seconds to go would mean a stoppage. Or did he think that that was not an authentic knockdown, the yeah, second one? That's right. I think the second one he thought was a slip and he waved it to say no knockdown. Now Hyde is down. This is the second authentic knockdown of this round. And it's, it's obviously, it's not the, the, it's the physical strength of Bo. I think the weight difference is made to... Megan Tell. It's just the key factor in the fight. He's being hit by a man, 17 stone three. There were two proper knockdowns and one slip, as counted by referee Richard Steele. But I don't think Hyde has too much chance here now. It's this, it's this a weight difference, isn't it? You can't give away two stone. It certainly is. I, I knew, I know that exactly how he feels when I was in the ring with Lennox Lewis. They're just so much a bigger man, and Hyde is getting caught, you know, it's, it's just the strength of him, the sheer power. You know, the, he's not getting caught bang, flush, but the sheer power of the man, the sheer strength. Now, the doctor's been called into the corner of Herbie Hyde, who may not be able to go on here, I think. He's been down four times now and taken four mandatory eight counts. Doctor's had a look. I think they are going to allow it to go on into a fifth round but I think the die seems to be cast it does I think the referee has got to be very aware of things now when he's been down this amount of times the Richard Steele has really got to be on his game yes there mustn't come a point really where Herbie Hyde is taking unnecessary punishment not when he's taking shots off a, a man as big and strong as Riddick Bo. Hyde started the fight so well. He's got the speed, he's got the boxing skills, but he just can't cope with that 17 stone power coming at him. Now Bo's using the jab to good effect, rocking Hyde's head back. Hyde bravely tries to come back at him. Again, we can see even when he misses the shots, Bo, the power is, is moving Hyde. I think Bo will want to be in close. He'll want to use them club and strong tactics like there. And again, he kind of mauls him to the floor, and you wonder how much more of this, really, the referee is going to allow. The fifth knockdown for Herbie Hyde. I don't think he's really got anything left. He's looking at the referee, I think... Herbie Hyde has maybe had enough. Yes, he I think the almost seemed to be inviting him in there. His fighter's instinct let him come back. Look at the way he's come back. Look at this for bravery from Herbie Hyde. He's certainly shown great heart and great spirit. But you get the feeling against hopeless odds now. Looking very tired and drained of all strength, Hyde. And it's, in, it's close, in close like this where Bo does most damage. When they get into a clinch, when Bo can really get some leverage and some power behind the shots. And those knockdowns have taken the spring now out of Hyde's legs. And once he loses the mobility, of course, he becomes a more stationary target for Bo. Half a minute left in this round. Hyde down five times so far. Even the jabs, you get the feeling, are shaking Hyde up. 
and it's a very good jab that Bo has. Terrific combination again from Hyde. He's looked flashy, he's looked skillful. But he's giving away too much weight. End of the fifth round. His Hyde is still just... Round's gone here. Herbie Hyde won the first two with his boxing skills. Since then, he's been down five times. Just feeling the weight of this bigger, stronger, world-class heavyweight. Should that fight have been stopped in the last round, Glenn? I think it could, at the last knockdown, I think Richard Steele, you know, would have, it could have been a good decision just to call a halt then. Bo has won the last three rounds by huge margins on the scorecards because of the knockdowns. So he'd have a massive points lead as well at this stage, despite Hyde winning the first two. A couple of those rounds might even have been ten points to seven rounds for Bo. Is there any way back from here for Herbie Hyde? I don't think so, do you? I don't think so, but he's only if he can land a, a good shot on ball while he's moving about. If he can land a good counter, then he can do something. And as you know, in the heavyweights, there's always a chance that a fight can be swung around. But he's landed with so many good shots, Herbie Hyde, and they just haven't put a dent in Bo, have they? No, I think Bo should really be wanting to get in close, because his best work has been almost in the malls or when when they've been grabbing then he's been using his physical strength and really you know, that's where the difference has been Hyde so tired that he collapses to his feet that there was not a a knockdown there he fell onto both knees with his exhaustion caught again and the towels come in from the corner the towel has come in from the Hyde corner I don't think it is the corner I think it's been thrown in Somewhere from the back, Ian, the, the, the corner certainly haven't done it. Well, there was a white towel thrown in there. They're not allowed to stop the fight like that these days. Only the referee can make the decision. Now, if that was a fan doing that, that was obviously well out of order. Well, Bo just can't quite finish off the job, but you get the impression that it could be at any moment the finish here. Even the jabs are taking it out of Herbie Hyde. They are, they're good, solid jabs. And every time Bo gets in close like this, he hurts his man. Surely this time, down goes Hyde again. He's been down now in every round from the third on. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth. I don't think he's going to make it up this time, is he? No, this time Hyde is counted out. Richard Steele wouldn't stop him. And I think Hyde, well, I'm glad, really, that he wasn't allowed to take any more. It is all over in the sixth round. Riddick Bow takes Hyde's WBO Heavyweight Championship. And after such a promising start, it was always going to be Hyde's speed against the size, strength, experience of Bow. And the size, strength and experience of Bow was what counted in a big way. And Hyde is in tears of despair. He's very upset. I know exactly how he feels, and I know exactly what it's like to fight a man as big as that. And it, it really, it's just the physical strength. He was defeated by that. Boys, you know, it's too stone, and it's too much to give away. You can't do it all on, you know, on speed. And in the other corner, Riddick Bow knelt down on one knee and said a little prayer. Body shots this time. And then the clubbing right hand, trademark Bow work, finished it all off with a left hook, and Hyde did not get up from that. It was the sixth knockdown that he suffered. But it was it was a good fight. Hyde started so very, very well. He moved well. His his counters were very good. And it, it looked good for him, but you just you just kind of got the feeling that he how long could he do it for before Bo used his strength with these big advantages that he's got and that power it told the tale in the end. The key round there was the third, wasn't it? Once Bo landed for the first time, Hyde was in trouble, and he was in trouble really from that point on, despite his bravery and his flashy combinations and in his, his athleticism, all counted for nothing. 
when it was 15 stone four playing 17 That's stone right. three. And, and this is where Bo did all his good work. This is where he won the fight with these big club and right hands, you know, which were just all, he had all the strength, all the power, and obviously Hyde couldn't take them. Well, in a moment or two, we'll try to uh, snatch a word with the protagonists up there. Okay, Larry Merchant is in there somewhere with his microphone. As usual, mayhem afterwards. Shame for Herbie Hyde. But there have been those who've said that he's a blown-up cruiserweight. The referee Richard Steele reaches the count of 10 at 2 minutes. 25 seconds of round number 6. The winner, and once again, heavyweight champion of the world, now a two-time world champion, Riddick. Big Daddy! No upset here, Riddick Bowe back in the heavyweight picture. And uh, one of his children, I think, in there giving Dad a hug. Big Daddy. Herbie Hyde's young seven-year-old brother is there, Alan, who suffers from leukemia. He's flown over. Despair and disappointment in the end for Herbie Hyde. He was so brave and so confident beforehand. I think the uh, doctors will need to take a, a long look at him. I would like to think, in view of recent events, that uh, Herbie Hyde will be kept under, under observation for a little while. I'm sure they will. He, it was a, a tough fight. He took a lot of heavy shots off a big, big man. He showed great heart, great courage, but unfortunately that just wasn't enough. But the good thing is he, you know, he's young, he's still, he's only 23, he's been there at top level, you know, so there's loads and loads of time for him to come again. So I think it's, um, you know, it's an experience, for, it's a bad experience to him, but you know, there can be like the end of the tunnel, he can come again from this. Nothing wrong with his boxing ability at all. He, at times, made Bo look positively ponderous, but of course that counted for nothing against the heavier armory in the end. That was the final knockdown. The two clubbing rights, the left hook. Riddick Bowe may well fight Jorge Luis Gonzalez in June, the Cuban. But, uh, of course, everybody in America believes that the natural fight is Bowe against Tyson, a kind of uh, Brooklyn derby. And that would be a mega fight, of course. Tyson due out of jail on March the 25th. There's going to be a media circus over here late in March when Tyson is allowed out. So we're still uh, in there waiting to hear from Riddick Bowe and his thoughts about that victory as we watch the finish yet again. And here it is. I goes back again to the ropes. You see Bo trying to get him to the body, bring them hands down. And then just as they're in close, he whips this big right hand in. And I think it's two big clubbing right hands. And that's enough. Is Bo the best heavyweight out there? Well, in my view, he certainly has the potential to be. If he's, when he's right, when he's in real good shape, as he was when he defeated Amanda Holyfield in their first encounter, I think he could well be the best heavyweight out there. But I think if there's a great fight in the build-up with him and Jorge Luis Gonzalez. I think that, you know, two big, big men. Yes, that would be an interesting one, all right, there. Uh, Gonzalez, the unbeaten Cuban. But Herbie Hyde here, after such a dazzling start in the first two rounds, could not cope with the power of Riddick Bowe. And uh, I wonder what the boys back in the studio made of all that. Back to you, Paul. Thanks to uh, Glenn and to Ian Dark, back ringside for some more reaction from Las Vegas in just a moment or two. Gary Mason has been watching mm. the uh, proceedings there with me with great interest. We have a seventh WBO World Heavyweight Champion in just eight years. You're going to tell me he's the best of them, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's the most significant champion because he is the man that beat the man that beat the man. And um, I, I have to say, uh, give Herbie Hyde a great deal of respect because he kept getting up and the odds were always against him. Well, by my reckoning, we'll check this. 
back, but seven times Herbie Hyde was down. Was that too many times for any fighter? Um, it was too many times, but Herbie Hyde, when he did jump in the later stages after he'd gone down a few times, he still showed that he had the intention and he was trying, but the task was just too much for him in the end. You know? But should the fight have been stopped sooner? Um, the referee could have stopped the fight um, sooner, but he can see little things a little bit closer than we actually can, you know, and he's judging it from a different point of view than we are. Mm -hmm. So that might be the reason why he allowed the fight to go on. But thankfully, he, he's OK and everything's well. But you have faith in his judgment, Richard Steele, in this respect. One remembers the Meldrick Taylor Chavez yeah, fight yeah, yeah, when, well, when he stopped the fight with, what, two seconds left on the clock in the last round? That's right, and um, he actually refereed the Frank, um, Bruno and Tyson mm -hmm. fight as well. And He's a referee that's known to have a lot of controversy surrounding him, but in this case, it, it will go forgotten if, nobody's, if nothing really happens, you know? But Riddick Bowe didn't prove to me as if he's the man that should be waiting for Mike Tyson. If I was him... I would not be waiting for Mike Tyson. All right, well, we'll expand on that theme after the break. Hope very much you've enjoyed the fight action. We hope to get more reaction from ringside, and Gary Mason will expand on this in just a moment. He was briefly the undisputed world heavyweight champion. He's back as a title holder now tonight. Riddick Bowe is the new WBO world heavyweight champion. Herbie Hyde's brave resistance ending in the sixth round in Las Vegas. Gary, there was a turnaround after Hyde made a brilliant start in the opening couple of rounds. I think we can have a look at round three, where things did definitely change in emphasis in the fight. I think, yeah, this was a, the Herbie's best part of the fight and his best round, but it, and also it was his worst because I think in there he threw so many punches, but he enabled Riddick Bo to realise that he's punching a little bit harder, he can take what he's giving him. He pushed him down there, but there was no particular punch thrown just before that. But look at him here now. Physically, he is hurt. And now he gets a determined look, I'm going to get up off the floor. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just think at that point, he, he, had, he had done all he did, that he could. And really both thought, right, now it's my turn. Was he already starting to look tired to you at that stage? And the way he got off the canvas there, did that betray signs of real tiredness as early as the third round? You showed by the amount of concentration and determination it took for him to actually get up off the floor that he was already tired and it was only three rounds and he had the big man in front of him. It was like a David and Goliath type situation and um, this time unfortunately David, um, David didn't make it. But David did provide plenty of excitement in the first couple of rounds, didn't he? He shocked a lot of people and you know the good thing about that is it's like they think, like, you know, like in America, it's like the limey heavyweight, yeah? And they're looking at him thinking he's going to fold over. And you, you see a big guy, little guy, and he's gone out there and he's peppering him and he's blistering him. And everybody, we all had to sit down and, and say, what's going on here? Were the tactics right at the start from Hyde? Yes, yeah, Herbie Hyde, he did all the right things. But then you could say that so did Riddick Bowe. Mm -hmm. You know, that nobody did anything wrong. It just, the job was just too big for the man. Generally too big for you him. didn't see that there was any way that he, he could have maintained that pace, Hyde? There was a possibility that Riddick Bowe could have, after getting peppered with lots of punches and cut, because and, he was complaining a lot about everything, wasn't he? He may have got disheartened and gone for a stage where Herbie would have been able to get a second wind and possibly continue to do that, but just the sheer size and strength was just too much in the end. I wonder if we can get back to ringside and have a quick word with the new champion, Riddick Bowe, and he's talking with Bruce Beck here thoughts on tonight's fight? Well, I thought it wasn't one of my, my better performances and so forth, but, you know, I, um, Herbie was, was somewhat awkward, and I mean, I regained my composure and got him out of there, but um, I, I needed to work out like that, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much pleased. First two rounds, it looked like you weren't getting off, and then in the third round, he tagged you pretty good, and all of a sudden, you got fired up. Not to mention he headbutted me. I think that that played a big part. And I said, well, you know, I realized Herbie is, is dangerous and he is harder than I, I thought he would. Shook me up a little bit. But once I got to get, I said, I got to get this guy because he, he's serious and, and he can hurt me. So I knew that I had to do away with him. What does it mean to get a title, a WBO heavyweight championship, second time for you as a world champ? Well, uh, you know, I get great pleasure out of being the, the, the champ. Whether it's the, the WBA, WBO, WBC, IBF, as long as I have heavyweight champion behind my name, I'm content. All right, what about the future now? What about Mike Tyson? Are you and Rock going to visit Mike on Monday? Yes, we are. We're going to visit, visit Mike to make sure he's doing okay and so forth. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to start uh, putting my focus into Jorge Luis Gonzalez or either Evander Holyfield. I think uh, a guy like Evander will always bring the best out in me. And Jorge, he just talks too much, so I just want to go in there and teach him a lesson. Are you the best heavyweight in the world today? You better believe it. Your commitment to training, was it a key? 
Oh, uh, I would I would have to think so. And, and you take a guy like Herbie, who's much lighter, and um, he had to be in great shape to withstand some of the punishment, and I was able to outlast him. So that in itself speaks of my conditioning. Congratulations, Riddick. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So he's pretty pleased with his night's work. I'm sure Herbie Hyde can take some grains of comfort from his effort, but I wonder how he's taking this first professional defeat. Let's hear from him now. A difficult contest for you. After the first two rounds, you must have thought you were well in it. Uh, after the first two rounds, I want to hurt Riddick. Rick, did that hurt you? Oh, definitely. definitely I hurt you. And I felt that. And when I fought Michael Ben, I was on the move all the time. I didn't want to mix it because I was beating Mark, stopping Michael Ben, made me a lot more confident and, and exchange. And I exchanged it with Riddick Bow. If I didn't exchange with him and kept on the move, I would beat him a lot easier. And I would be in here 12th round and I would won, and I won a lot easier. I tried to, I tried to be a hero, try to stop him. I'm, that, I'm 23 years old, Riddick is 26, 27, mm -hmm. and I'll be back. And I just want a rematch. Go ahead and don't forget Riddick. I want a rematch. Okay, yeah? Herbie, you deserve it. Yeah? You deserve, you deserve it, guys. Thank you very much. How, how good a champion now do you feel that yeah. uh, this big fella Riddick Bow is? Riddick Bow, many people believe Riddick Bow is, is number one. But if he's number one, man, I'm there. Oh, yeah. I'm I, read, I would have to rate Herbie number there, two. I mean, I mean number nah, three. Nah, the only nah, guy that has some fun is the whole Riddick, No, no, Riddick. I want, I, I'm coming back, and I want you again. OK. Right? And next time, believe me, I'll be better. All, all right? right, I look forward I'll to it, Herbie. Be and all I want is you and Rock, all right? Good luck. Good Give luck, me man. a rematch. OK, appreciate it. Right. Tough guy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Favorite word in any boxer's vocabulary? Rematch. That was quite good there with the Herbie's. At least Herbie's all right. I would question whether Herbie can change around some of the fundamental things exposed yeah. at world level about yeah. being a, a class heavyweight. For example, Bo simply had far too much physical power for him in close. Yeah. Now, yeah. That's, that's a structural problem that's going to be difficult to get around, yeah. okay? But I can understand the Herbie Hyde's thinking, because he's thinking he was half in it. He, well, he was right in it, and genuinely right in it. But just for that, this is, if he can go away and bulk himself up, as we've seen fighters do before in the past, Herbie Hyde, Herbie Hyde has arrived. I remember, we said before, you don't see how good a fighter is when you see him lose. And if he can lose like that, and he can have the, the attitude of character to come back, but see, Herbie Hyde doesn't realise his, his fight really begins now. Yes, well, <laughs> hopefully from Herbie's point of view, he's going to take that message away from Las Vegas and the weekend and the experience of, of being exposed to the, the big time and the razzmatazz, etc., yeah. as well as getting into the ring. But when he confronted the armoury of Riddick Bowe, that would have been a big shock to him, wouldn't it? Yeah. Even oh. with the jab, he was knocking him backwards. Yeah. But no, just after listening to Herbie, the, just by the way he sounded, my interpretation of the situation was, because he wasn't exactly like, he wasn't polaxed or anything like that. Although he was knocked down around seven times, he was hurt a great deal. But really, shouldn't really Bo have polaxed him with some of them big punches? Well, maybe Bo would say that he did polax him, in, in that he had him sat down seven times. Well, I, I don't know. I just think it's just the, just the sheer weight, a heavy, it's like a heavy-handed man. Mm -hmm doing it to him and and Herbie has realized that if I can just get some sort of resistance to that heavy handedness I'm in the picture Riddick Bowe says he's the best heavyweight out there I would say to Riddick Bowe that you are a liar and you are frightened of Lennox Lewis but well more sure. that, in just a moment or two but about Bowe's armory you, you felt that basically he didn't really deliver clinical finishing punches no he didn't for, for all the all the physical advantages that he had he did not deliver those blows in the way that they should have done. It was a very, on his, and on, his, on his part, it was a very bad performance. And if he's going to, to visit Mike Tyson in prison and talk about a fight with him, he wants to really think about it carefully because Tyson will hurt him. Because mm -hmm. we saw what Riddick Bowe did, we saw what Herbie did to him. Tyson will do that with power. Well, Mike Tyson hasn't fought for four years, and right now there is no certain indication that he will fight again. Uh, Everybody in America is starting to talk about Tyson as though it's a certainty that he's going to come out and go straight back into world heavyweight title action, but that is by no means certain, Gary. Riddick Bowe now has himself a title again. He's the WBO world heavyweight yes. champion. And one of the things in the background, Rock Newman sitting at ringside, his manager, they have talked in the build-up to this fight that they intended to do for the WBO with this title, what Larry Holmes did for the IBF back in the 80s when Holmes became IBF champion. It was completely unfashionable before that, but Holmes made it highly respectable. Now, do you see Bo doing the same thing? Yes, because Bo is one of the most recognised heavyweights out there, and whatever title he has will carry a great deal of influence, because in reality, there are so many different um, titles and weight divisions that people aren't always exactly following the title, they're following the champion. Mm -hmm. 
and Bo obviously is a champion to be watched. Mm -hmm. From Harry's point of view, can he come back stronger from this? Oh, yes. And judging by his conversation after that, he sounds as if he, he could have the right frame of mind. And he could, he could very well come back. He's 23, he's got a lot to learn. Mature, heavyweights don't mature till they're, late, they're yes. late 20. So Herbie, he's gone over there, he's done himself proud, himself proud, and he's come back a lot richer and a lot, more, a lot wiser. And sometimes, even when you lose, you actually win. Will Bo need to be much better if he does go through this match against Gonzalez, who we saw at the top of the show tonight? Well, I, I, don't, I can't see why he wants to fight Gonzalez. It's a sensible fight, and I think he could beat Gonzalez. But if he is as serious as he's making out to be fighting Tyson and being the best, one person that he threw a title away because he didn't want to fight was Lennox Lewis. And he still does not want to fight Lennox Lewis. Him and Lennox Lewis are at a similar stage in their careers. A match with him and Lennox Lewis now could be a very big, lucrative match for all of them, and a genuine one, and it'll give an idea of who should really be in line for Tyson. Well, Tyson's on the way back, certainly, in the near future, out of the detention mm -hmm. center. The WBC world champion is Oliver McCall. He's down to fight Larry Holmes next. Yeah. Will McCall reign on as WBC champion? Well, McCall should, but as we, we're watching all the time, anything is possible. And um, if, I think if Holmes was to win, that would cause more problems because Holmes yes. is going to want a couple of easy fights, isn't he? You know, McCall is in there, and if he can get through this, then Frank's in the picture again. You know, Frank and, Bruno. Yeah. So we've got a great deal of British interest in all the pitches, in all the scenarios as well. Lennox Lewis down to fight an eliminator against Lionel Butler. Yes. Well, he's got to get that business out of the way, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, and that, that will be quite important. But I, I like Lennox's style. Lennox did everything the hard way all the time. And even in his comeback, he's, going, he's not just coming back at the bottom, he's coming back right in the middle of it. You know, so, so he, he's testing himself all the time, which is a good sign. Why do you say Bo is scared of Lewis? Because... Lewis has Does this go back him. to amateur days? Yes, because Lewis had actually beaten him, and the way he got beat, it, he generally got beat by Lewis, and he was giving it a lot of a lot of a lot of the verbal on the build-ups while their careers were building up, and they had actually signed to fight before Lennox fought Ruddock. They had actually signed to fight, and he pulled out of that and, and threw away the title. But then he was prepared to fight for the same title that he'd thrown away. And he'd made no mention of Lennox Lewis. That's a great rubber match, something that everybody's been waiting to see for a very long time. Other matches still in the pipeline. The IBF champion George Foreman against Axel Schultz. How would that one go? Um, well, do you know something? That, that anything can happen there. Because George is, he is, in reality, he's ready to be beat. He has done what he, he, what he set out to do, and he's taken that step further. And at this stage, he is vulnerable to any fighter. Mm -hmm. And he's chose somebody that's not even in any, of the, in any of the world ratings. And he is still vulnerable. Well, he's also chosen, basically, to, to relinquish his control of the WBA version of the World Heavyweight Crown, which means we've got this amazingly fragmented picture at the yeah. present time. And it also means that Tony Tucker is going to fight Bruce Selden for that vacant WBA crown. How does that one go? Um, I'd have to go for Tucker there and give in Don King a chance to have possibly a Lewis rematch or a, a match with Bruno and there's lots of excitement. We're, the heavyweight scene at the moment is back to where it was, I think it was, was it 1985 that Tyson first won the title? Mm -hmm. where, yes. where you've got all the different champions and we can look forward to a series of unification match and then somebody in a, a year, two years time or three years will be the undisputed heavyweight champion and we can all we'll look forward to that build up. Leave Tyson out of it because even if he does come out and yeah. does go back to the top, it's still a little yeah. way off. Who's the best heavyweight in the world right now? For, for me? Yeah. Lennox Lewis. And I say that with my hand on my heart. Lennox Lewis is the best heavyweight. Look at Riddick Bowe. Honestly, look at Riddick Bowe. You can't realistically say he's the best. Okay then, if not Lennox Lewis, yeah? Lennox Lewis, Evander Holyfield. Yeah, but Riddick Bo comes in the top three, mm -hmm. but for me, he's not my first choice. All right, Gary, enjoyed your company as always. Thanks very much indeed. Nice to, nice to be here. And it's a fascinating picture, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very, listen, it's getting very, very exciting. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of... Well, we'd like you to keep watching. Here's a couple of things to attract your attention. Coming on Sky Sports today at midday, join Richard Keaton and the team live from Old Trafford for the FA Cup sixth round. The holders Manchester United still in pursuit of a second successive double against Queen's Park Rangers. Ray Wilkins returns to Old Trafford. 
Now, we're following the one-day series, the unofficial World Championship, really, between the West Indies and Australia. It's tied up at one apiece, and we're still in Trinidad for the rest of the weekend. The third one-day international comes live and exclusive from 1.30 this afternoon on Sky Sports 2. The second session from 6 in the evening on Sky Sports. US PGA Golf, the fourth and final day of the Honda Classic, Faldo in contention. David Livingston, you and Murray and the team. Sky Sports 2 tonight at 8 p.m. And just a big reminder about our next ringside special for you, the WBO World Super Middleweight title defense by Chris Eubank against the WBO World Middleweight title holder, Steve Collins. Collins stepping up. Can he also step into the world arena at Super Middleweight? We're at Mill Street in Cork next Saturday evening the 18th of March, join us live and exclusive on Sky Sports from 9 in the evening. So it's Eubank next weekend, no questioning Herbie Hyde's bravery tonight, but Riddick Bowe is back and he's off to see Mike Tyson on Monday. From the team, bye for now.